Nothing's off limits with this duo. It's father and daughter, Don and Cher. And join the club if you're a chatter mouth. Hey, y'all, it's Cher and Dawn. And welcome back to the Chattermouth Chatter Podcast. Podcast. I hope everyone's having a great day. We're all so lucky to be here. Cher, sure, you seemed a little bit down today. I don't. I what's, was. What's I was matter? thinking. You know, I kind of want to get into something a little deeper today. Um, this is something that happened to me recently. I haven't really spoken out so much about it since the actual incident, and I felt like today was a day I kind of wanted to tell you all what fully went down. Um, I feel like I'm already getting chills thinking about all of this. Sometimes it's good to get it off your chest and talk about it. Mm -hmm. I've been having dreams um, about it, so I know that it's something very significant in my life. Um, But recently, um, I don't know where to begin. Okay, so um, let's get into it. Yeah, (laughs) so it's hard to talk about something traumatic that's happened, but I feel like it's important to also to tell people like my side of the story. So um, recently I was, this past summer actually, I had just moved to Florida, not to Florida, excuse me, to Tampa area. And there was a big actress, Gabby's Dollhouse. Um, My daughter loves Gabby's Dollhouse. And so the actual main actress of the show was coming to the mall. And so I was like, oh my gosh, we have to take her there. So Belle would be just like, so yeah. So I took her, she did get to meet Gabby from Gabby's Dollhouse um, and she was so excited and it was great and we were about to head out but before we left we realized there's this really big carousel in the middle of the mall and she so, loves carousel and she loves carousels so Jared went and took her on a carousel ride and she had so much fun and I was like I mean I had to go pee I was gonna love carousel rides I always get dizzy on carousel rides I get very like nauseous um, so I went to the bathroom and I peed and then I came back and she's like, mommy, can I want to go with you this time? And I was Aww. like, okay. So Jared's like, I'll, I'll go to the bathroom this time. You take her. So I take her to the, onto the carousel and we're going in. I locked her in, you know, you have to like put the buckle on her and everything. I put the buckle on her and then all of a sudden we're on it and I hear a huge gunshot go off in the mall, oh my a God. big bang. Oh my and God. it was in the food court, which the carousel, let me tell you, the carousel ride is right next to the food court. And so all of a sudden this big loud bang, I thought in my head, it can't be so, can't be so. And then all of a sudden I look up and there's all these people running at the carousel. They're running towards us as fast as they can, screaming, shooter, shooter. Now this is your the the worst nightmare come true, right? I am petrified of guns. I won't even go in a gun range. I'm so scared of guns. This is my worst nightmare ever. And all of a sudden I see everyone running from the food court towards where we are. And Jared was just in the bathroom in the food court. He had just gone there. He was there. And all of a sudden, and I'm here on this carousel ride. How I have to get out. What am I gonna do? Do I hide? Do I run? Like what? I'm a mom. Like I have to take care of my daughter, and so I, I, I have to get for my. I'm like shaking. Probably it's going like, in circles. This carousel ride doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. The guy doesn't stop the carousel oh ride. He God, just runs he away stopped. himself as the carousel ride, and all the kids are on this ride oh. still buckles in she's buckled I can't get the buckle off I'm like freaking out I can't get the buckle off I get her off I'm like the first person to basically go I jump I take her down off of this and there's a fence around the carousel so there's only one exit and one entrance of this carousel ride and in order to leave you have to to exit you have to go towards where the shooting is happening oh I can't take so I I'm like I can't go towards the shooting. I have to climb this fence. This fence was as tall as me, and usually I can jump over it, but I can't jump over it while holding a child. Right? I had to pick her up, so I'm holding Bell, trying to climb over this fence with my big purse, and which I should have just dropped. But I had my purse. I had Bell in one hand, and I'm going as fast as I can. I get her off the carousel ride. I go. I'm like I have to get her off over this, and I jump over this fence. I land, and she lands smack Ouch. on her head. Ouch. It was the worst. And someone helps us up, and I'm like, "Run!" There's a shooter, and which was so nice of this person, ever. Like, she could so have been nice. trampled on. Well, well, right, we could have been trampled. People were getting trampled on, and we. So I wait, pick her up because she lands flat. I land on my whole hip. 
I land on my whole side. I'm all like black and blue on my side. I'm like running as fast as I can. I'm like, screw this. I throw my purse. Literally, I had this whole purse with my money in it, my wallet, my keys. I throw my purse. I throw my keys. And I'm holding Belle. And I and I take off. I was wearing sandals. I throw off my flip-flops. And I'm just running barefoot out of the mall because I just got to get out as fast as I can. And I'm running, thinking, what if someone shoots me from behind? Oh, what if someone gets us? People, everyone's running everywhere. Some people are running into stores and hiding. Hiding. But like I'm thinking, I just gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And the whole time I'm thinking, is Jared ever gonna? Is he gonna come? Like, what's gonna happen? I finally get out into the out of the mall, and there's people standing there. Like, what's wrong? I'm like, there's everyone's screaming, shooter, shooter. I'm like, guys, got everyone has to run. But I get out of the mall and I realize I don't have my keys. I don't have my wallet. Like, how am I supposed to leave the mall area? I can't even. I don't have my keys. I don't have anything. I was like, well, that was stupid. But it also, my bag was humongous. It was like a mom bag, you know, with all my stuff in it. I had to get out, and thank God I got out. But then I'm out there, and I'm like where's Jared? Is he ever going to get out? Like, is he okay? Like, am I about to become a widow? Like what's happening? Like, I don't know what's going on in there. And then we're what waiting. was Belle doing oh, the whole This was time. the worst. So this is the hardest part is because we, me and her have a secret phrase. And I re- really that. think that every parent needs to have a secret phrase with their child where if there's ever an emergency, you say that phrase and your child knows you, they need to listen to you because it's an emergency. And so we, I said that secret phrase, Belle listened to me. She stopped what she was doing and she got off that carousel ride and she ran with me. Mm-hmm. So every parent needs to have a secret phrase with their child and you never say it unless it's an emergency. So I used that phrase and she knew something was wrong and she saw me and I was trying to keep my main composure. I didn't cry. I held it together because I needed to get her out of there. I needed to stay my focus. Jared always says that I freeze a lot of times under pressure, but this was not a time to freeze. Mm -hmm. And so I got out and I'm just waiting until Jared. And then finally I see Jared and he's running and he ran out too. And I'm like, and then I saw him and I just like broke down crying. I broke down. I remember you calling me crying hysterically. Well, what's the matter? Screaming on the phone. What's the matter? What's the matter? Right. And it was, yeah, it was very hard because I, I literally was like, I thought of, we might not make it through this. And that's the worst feeling because this happens in real life. But the, Jared came out, he's running out. And guess what? He still had his stroll, the stroller. <laughs> and I'm like, so why weird. do you still have the stroller? He's like, no, I used it to like block people from trying to trample me. Like oh, it was my blockage. And I was like, oh, that's kind of smart. Um, but he got out and thank God we were reunited. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. Anyways, thank God we all were okay. Everything was okay. But um, I had made a TikTok video after all of this because, so well, first of all, before I get into that, there was this loud gunshot, right? And everyone's screaming and everything. What do you tell your child, your four and a half year old child? I don't want to scar her into thinking like something bad, but right. also this is the reality of today. Like this is America, unfortunately, that we have these scares. We have these worries. Um, I, we ended up telling her it was a big balloon pop. It was, was just smart. a balloon pop. Because at the time, Jared thought it was a balloon pop. He's came out to me and he's like, why are you so in a huff? Like he ran out too. I was like, there's a shooter. He's like, I know everyone's saying that, but I think it was just a balloon pop. That's what he said. He really thought it was. Um, it wasn't. That's what, that's what probably kept his exposure you know I think that's what kept his composure yes it kept his composure um he thought it was a balloon pop and he told Belle it's just a balloon pop don't worry mommy's freaking out no reason it's just a balloon pop so in her mind it was just a balloon pop um but I had made this TikTok video basically just to try to connect with other people that are going through the same thing like hey like this is happening right here right now if you're here like you're not alone and so I made this TikTok video it ended up going viral um and then it came out, somebody else had film, was filming the carousel ride that I was on. Really? And someone was actually filming it, not related to me at all. And it just went mega viral. And it showed, the, the video is basically me trying to get Belle off the carousel ride. So wow. now, so it's us trying to get off and thank God we got off. And then all these news outlets were contacting me, like what happened? Like what was going through your head? And all these things. And so we did, there was like news stories on it. It was crazy. Um, Thank God we're all okay. And the craziest part of all this is this was the actual story. There wasn't a shooter, in fact, even though I'm traumatized as if there was a shooter. But what it was, was there was this person was in the mall and she had a gun in her uh, purse and it was an accidental discharge. And it went off. But no one knew that. Everyone was eating in the food court. Everyone dropped their food and is running, screaming shooter. People were getting trampled on. People were hiding in in stores. People were going 
you know, having panic attacks. I am left black and blue. Belle's black and blue. We're all hurt. It, it's like it really happened. Thank God it didn't happen, but it's like it did. Like we were involved in a shooting incident. We were at a, at a mall where there was an active shooter. That's what went through my head. And so now I have to deal with these thoughts of scares. And every day, everywhere I go, I'm I'm nervous now. So that's and it why sticks. you're afraid going into malls. Like you don't enjoy it. You go I in, don't. but you want to leave soon right. because you always loved going shopping in the mall i mean we mm-hmm. love shopping but um you i guess the the flashbacks of the situation yeah i still i can't go into a mall and feel comfortable anymore i just can't and it's very sad we didn't actually experience that but the thought of of what if there is a shooter in this mall Anything can happen at any moment. And it's so sad that we're in a world where you have to be concerned about something like that, that someone that you don't even know can take your life, who doesn't know anything about you, who could have been your friend. Any, like just some random person can can do that to you and scar you. And I wish there was more like help available or something for these people or, or there needs to be more um, metal detectors going in like there is at Disney World or something because I'm literally scared to go into a mall now. I'll go in. Recently, I went in for the first time and um, I was nervous. Everywhere I walk, I'm looking next. To, I'm, I'm looking. If I go I into Walmart, if I go into that. Target, if I go into supermarkets, I'm now nervous and it stinks. But you always have to be on your guard. And it's, I, I need to figure, I need to. Um, it's good to be on your guard no matter yeah. where you go in today's world. But you do have to move on and um, try to, I know it's easier said than done, but say that, you know, y- life goes on and just gets stronger from the situation. Mm-hmm. And you do have to move on mm-hmm. and try to take a terrible situation and just be more cautious about it. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. I just feel like we're so we're so lucky to be on this earth. Like we have one shot in life. What it's are you so laughing interesting about? Interesting because I find that it's sad, but not until something traumatic happens to you do you really really appreciate the what you have in life. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't be like that, but it just is like that's the reality is that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's not till something happens that you realize, oh, I, I shouldn't be, you know, I'm so happy to, and so grateful to be alive or healthy or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And wish we could be more like just grateful for everything every day. Well, I think we can be. And I think we need to start like stop and kind of think about like our life, like what we have. And I always try, I always tell myself this, which is crazy. Like we have one shot on this earth. And we can do whatever we want with that one shot, but we need to like make it our best because we never know when, what day it's going to be our last. We might not plan for it to be our last. I thought the day that I was in the mall shooting, I thought that was my last day. And we don't know when our last day is going to be. So every single day you got to wake up and be like, was today a good day? Did I make it my best day? Like, yes, like my best day would be like at the spa with you, mom. But like, and we're not going to get to do that every day. But did we have a good day? Are we putting, doing what we want in our life? And if we're not doing what we want in our life, then change change your path. Yes, And I think that your life is your book to write. And if you're not liking what you're writing, time to change and move on to the next chapter. A lot of times everything is is mental and everything, you know, so you have to, like you said, Cher, put your mind to it and say, wake up in the morning. I heard to say this. Wake up in the morning and say, I'm grateful. This is going to be a great day. Mm-hmm. And believe it. Mm-hmm. And if you believe it, your day will be better. Yeah, I agree. And think about what, like, for me, I'm always thinking, what do I want to leave on this earth? You know, like, what do I want to like, what do I want to do? What do I want to leave? I think something amazing you leave is your children, right? You mm-hmm. think about, okay, I've raised this a beautiful person and they're going to inspire the next generation. And, or w- like, what are you, what are you leaving? What memories are you leaving with people? Um, I think of, just be a good person. Yeah. And if you're a good person, then everything good will, yeah. you know, come across so you'll at least feel that you, you also were good. don't you don't want to live the life with, with um regrets either i think one of, my, one of my biggest i do have one big regret sorry to pause the podcast but if you're loving our podcast then you'll love our book and we have to tell you a little about it actually we wrote this book 
And it's about how we got this close and how you can too. It's called A Bond That Lasts Forever. And basically, it goes over our life's ups and downs. It shows pictures throughout our life and has adorable quotes throughout to inspire other mothers and daughters to have their own special relationship. You can pick it up on Amazon.com, at Barnes & Nobles, or wherever you get your books. Now, let's, let's get, get back, back to the, the podcast. podcast. Um, so one of my friends... Uh, It'll make me cry thinking about this. But one of my friends, um, he was just such a like a really good friend. It was a guy, and he was an amazing friend, such a good person. Uh, Jared knew him. I went to camp with him. Great person. And he had called me once, and we would play phone tag sometimes. And we we were like we we're good friends. And you know, you don't always talk to your friends every day. And your friends know if you get busy, you'll call them back eventually. You don't always call them back right away. He called me, and I just like didn't call him back for a few for a while. And I wish I did. I know that sounds crazy because we all do it. We don't always call people back right away. And I wish I did because he ended up passing away. Um, And I live with this regret of like, I should have called him back. I should have picked up the phone. Like why couldn't, what was so important in my day that I couldn't pick up? So yeah, I, but he doesn't realize, he, he didn't think that. He but I that think that. And, and so, right. But I, I'm left with this regret because I wish I had that one last phone call. And so I think that in life, like when your friends need you, like you do it. Or if your mom calls you and you don't pick up the phone, call her back because you never know if something's going to happen. Can there be a car accident? Could something happen? And, and like you just never know in life. So like you just – if something is important, like think about what's important and what's most important and then go with what's most important. Like find time for the people you care about because you don't want to have regrets. It's so true, but you know, you only learn these things from bad things. Ha- terrible thing to say, but well, you I hope nothing. You know, well, that's why I'm trying to tell people like, right. don't don't have the regret that I have. Right. And people are always saying like, we're so happy and stuff, and we I feel like we are. I feel like we're very positive people. Well, you try to be positive, but I don't. I, mean, I don't put know. it on like fake. Like I am. I wake up. I'm overall happy until I'm not. Right. Right. You, you are a very positive person. But until I'm not. But I try to be happy because we are lucky to be here. And I know this is crazy, but every time I pass um, a funeral home, like I wasn't driving. First of all, I always hold my breath because of the superstition where like you don't want to breathe in the soul, the dead souls. But I hold my breath, number one. But number two is I, I look there and I think we're so lucky to be here on this side. Every day above ground is a good day. So let's try to make it a good day because we're here. And you just like, it's just so crazy how life is so short. I don't know. It's just weird. It, this is a quite thing that well, stumbled I'm philosophers. A little bit crazy what you say. You know, I visit my parents who passed away recently in the last few years. Uh, both of them I lost one year after the next. And my home away from home, it's a really creepy thing to say. Really? Is the cemetery. I go to the cemetery. I find it. You're gonna think I'm really crazy now. I find it very peaceful. Well, because you're with your you're with your parents. I'm still. with my parents. I sit there and I talk to them. I clean their plot down. I put up new flowers. I make sure it looks beautiful because my mom always liked everything beautiful. And I say it's this nice. is the prettiest area. You have the prettiest area. <laughs> and she does because I make it really pretty. And um, I just find it very peaceful, and I could say whatever's on my mind. So whenever I'm troubled or I'm upset, I just take a drive over there, and it kind of makes me feel good when mm-hmm. I leave there. Of course, I do feel depressed that, you know, I can never see them again or talk to them, you know, in person again. But I feel like they're there, and it's just peaceful. So I, I, I like going to the cemetery. It gives wow. me comfort, which well, is crazy, but it it's does. It's not crazy because that's just your where you feel good. And I think, you know, you probably have like a meditative almost feeling when you're there, like, you know. Yeah, I guess. And you connect I, with I your parents do. and you're alone and it's peaceful and you're probably not on social media and you're just there. And I think that's good. Why you look like a little sad right now? No, no. I was just, I was just thinking about it because, um, I do go there more often, I think, than anybody goes to the cemetery or most people go. Or maybe they just don't say it. I, a lot of times, half the time that I go, I don't even tell anyone I'm going. I'm just going, you know, because I just feel like I'll say to my husband, Mason, I'll say, oh, I'll, I'll be back in, a, in, in an hour. And what do you, when you go, there. what do you do? Do you talk, do you talk to them? Oh, do you talk yes. to yourself? Yeah, I you talk do. to them. I, I tell them what's on my mind, if something's wrong, why, 
why aren't you fixing it? <laughs> you know, sometimes I yell at them, well, you're <laughs> supposed to be fixing it. If you're really there, why don't you make it better, so you cute. know, or, yeah. or whatever, or uh, why I miss them or what they were so wonderful what, to me, uh, how I feel about them or whatever it is, whatever my day has to mm -hmm. bring to say. But, um, you know, that's what I do. You, I think that's a good thing, though. I mm -hmm. think that's you, where you're able to kind of it sounds to me that you like that place because you're able to speak your feelings. You like say them out loud. And I think that's something that a lot of people should do is kind of like talk to yourself or talk out, like say whatever it is that's stuck in your brain, like say it, put it into the world because you're getting it out. Um, as a, like I'm a dating coach. I don't know if everybody knows this, but I, I have a, my company that I actually have a business of is called NYC wing woman. I'm a dating coach. And one of the things I'd always tell people who were trying to date, um, where if they're having these feelings or or if they're feeling a lot of people come to me and they're having a lot of anxiety or depression or these thoughts in their head they're kind of holding them back from dating and I say whatever's stuck in your brain if you're having any like sadness or negativity or anxiety get it and write it down like write it all out get it out there it's gone now it's done it's out you could take that paper and crumple it up throw it away you can light it throw it in the fire do whatever you want but it's out now I it's see, out of you. I see your nursing head really, really <laughs> on top of your head because, you know, yeah. you did psychiatry Psych nurse. Yeah, I was a psych nurse, nurse for a long and, time. And um, it's wonderful because they do say that. Write it down. Keep a journal. Or, and, or just say like it out that. loud like you're doing. Right. Um, I think I need to take my own advice. I think right now I've been struggling with, like, nightmares where it's the same thing over and over. We're, like, stuck somewhere and it's you or it's – Jared or it's me or somebody is you know in a bad situation with this whole thing um so I think I need to figure out what to do with this I know a lot of people say like you know try therapy for that which I, I probably should but um, well your therapy is talking about it yeah, for me helps. it's just is talking it's getting it out there um but I, you know we recently we, my mom and I had got these oh, bracelets yes. Well, no, this is our Chattermouth bracelet, of course, Love but that. but oh. this bracelet, these are to help us with energy. Um, I don't know why I felt like we'll get into it more in later episodes, but I feel like we've been having a lot of like, there's a lot of negativity since I've moved since, I guess, since the summer. Um, so I got these energy bracelets that's supposed to like yield off negativity and bad things. And and so I wear them as like my protection, like my, my suit of armor almost. <laughs> like sometimes you need something just to feel like you can't mess with me me yeah. I got my bracelets on <laughs> I don't I know it works take them off tell you the truth I even shower with them me too. it's like a mental thing for sure but I just I, you know it's like kind of like uh what's that book where it's like you put out into the, the universe secret. the secret where it's like you put out into the universe what you want to happen and so yes. this is like my protection I'm putting it out there like nothing bad's gonna happen to us anymore like we're strong we're here and just like live every day to the fullest mm -hmm. um I think that it's important though like in life, I think my biggest thing I want to just say is like, for you too, it's like, think about what you want to do. Like, where do you want to go? What is your end goal? Like, where do you want? Where can you be in your in your deathbed dying and say, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so happy that I am here where I am today. Um, and then try to work on getting to that spot. You know, it's so interesting you say this because I'm 64 years old, which is even hard to say. And I say to myself, how many good years do I actually have left? I mean, I think, you know, being my husband was an internist, and um, he always says, after 80, things start really happening bad. It doesn't, it's not really good anymore, that he found that most of his patients after 80, their health declined mm -hmm. for whatever reason, one way or another. So I say to myself, I'm 64, like in 16 years from now, I'll be 80, right? Am mm -hmm. I doing the math right? Yeah. And wow, like 16 years goes by like that, you know, it just goes by. So I say, you know, I can't let things bother me. I mean, easier said than done. I have to enjoy my life now because it's going to go very fast. I find daddy really enjoys mm. his life. And I, I really look up to him for that. He enjoys every single day. I don't know if it's because he was a physician and he saw all this health decrease, but he makes the best of every day. That's he good. enjoys his day. And I said, <laughs> I need yeah, we're to putting start him to work always. That. We're always, because, you know, that's those 16 years are going to go so fast. 
So it's true about mentally making the most of each day. So have you, what have you done to like feel that you're making the most of every day? Like, do you feel satisfied? Do you feel happy within your day to day? And if not, what can you do to change that? Like what would make you happy? What does make you happiest? I'm happy when I'm hanging out here and talking with you. You <laughs> know, that's, I, I really enjoy talking to you because when you have Belle around, it's not the same. We can't really talk. We're kind of mm-hmm. like, we're kind of like go with Belle and everything like that. So it's it's hard. So I enjoy our special time, and I find this is like our special like niche where we just like spill the tea and yeah. we could say whatever's on our mind, and it's not going. You know, it's just right. between us and. I guess the and world. And the chatter mouths. <laughs> no, the just us and the chatter mouths. That's all. Yeah, us and the chatter mouths. Yeah. I love that too. But yeah, I think you just have to find what it is that makes you happy and do what it is that makes you happy. Um, I love this so much. And I love spending time with you. I think surrounding yourself too with the people that like make you happy and build you up. And like for me, that's you. Like you always build me up and make me happy. So some people it's, you know, whoever it is, like find that person and surround yourself by them. That's what I'm always saying. I want to hang out with you, you know? Or do something that you love to do. You know, like I'm going to say this might be very shallow to a lot of people, but I love to shop. I just love shopping. See, I used to love that, but now I'm like scared to go in the malls, you know? But when you get something, it's just like, to me, it's like a high. I mean, that's for me. And I, when I put it on, the outfit, I feel good. (laughs) I come home smiling. So if I'm depressed one day, I'll just actually walk in the mall and just go like browsing Good. around yeah, and no, I like picking that. things out for you and me <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute I love that that's the thing with with shopping online it's like it's so easy to buy because you just click a button and it's almost like right. doesn't hit you that you spent money but then it's you know it's, it's not, not as not, exciting it's, it's not, not the same the, it's <laughs> not the high of trying it on seeing what it's like, feeling the material, mm. getting the excitement. Oh, it fits really good. I look good in yeah, this. Yeah, totally. You know? No, I agree with that for sure. It's convenient. Yeah. That's I like, I think Amazon also shopping. just getting out of the house is helpful. Like yes. for me going outside and having to take care of my animals, every time I'm outside, I'm like, oh, I feel yeah. so good. I see my animals and it just makes me so happy. But yeah, find what makes you happy. I yes. love that. Whatever it is. Yes. Okay. So we'll go visit the animals. We'll do a little shopping. I don't know. I have to work on the shopping thing again um hopefully soon I'll build myself back up to it because it makes me happy when I'm with you I guess if we if you're with it sounds so bad but if you're with each other then you know doesn't matter matter what happens next (laughs) we're always laughing yeah we're always having fun um anyways thank you all for listening to this podcast this was a hard one for me to talk about but I feel like talking about the hard things is what makes us stronger um and makes us more like you know we learn things together all of us chatter mouths so on that note we'll see you all next time chatter mouths thanks for watching Bye. bye